Hi, yeah, and here we go again. Um, uh, Going to look at uh, the whole topic of anonymity uh, this week about situations uh, where uh, certain vulnerable groups are um, given anonymity, so we are not able to name them. So we're going to run through uh, some uh, key topics. A really important topic. Uh, this. Um, However, just want to warn you that we will be talking about um, some sensitive issues during uh, this lecture and during the workshop. Uh, so um, we'll be talking about sexual offences, um, not in uh, in uh, detail uh, naturally, but uh, we'll be talking about how we report on sexual offences. So if you're not comfortable with this um, uh, in terms of either viewing it in this uh, lecture, um, this video lecture, or um, talking about it during the workshop, um, then I fully understand that uh, it's not something that uh, everyone uh, might feel comfortable uh, um, discussing. Uh, so um, you are welcome not to watch this video and uh, not to attend the um, workshop, but uh, you do need to know um, how to report on uh, this issue. So you do need to read McNay's chapters 10 and 11. So. Um, uh, just be aware of that. So I'll leave that to you, but uh, I just want to make sure I flag up this as an issue, which I know is, for some people is difficult uh, to um, uh, to discuss. A couple of other reminders. Um, I want to make sure you, um, in the absence of uh, our, our ability to actually go to court and show you uh, how a court operates, it's important that you get a take the next best thing, which is a bit of a video tour. And there's a uh, folder on Blackboard which contains several court videos to show how they work. It takes you, there's one which takes you around um, uh, the Magistrates Court, another one which takes you around the Crown Court, and then there's a mock trial uh, on, uh, on Blackboard as well. So I'd like you to have a look at those so you get a really good idea of how a court operates um, in, uh, in the UK. Another reminder, which is about uh, the essay. Well, we're getting very close now, depending on when you're watching this, uh, this video, but uh, 4 p.m. on Friday, March the 19th. So uh, that's uh, this Friday uh, coming uh, at the point when you're watching this. Uh, so make sure you uh, get your essay in on time, uh, unless of course you have uh, extra time under a reasonable uh, adjustment uh, plan agreed with the university. Um, but uh, for uh, most of you, that means uh, the deadline is this Friday. Uh, remember, uh, you if you submit late, even one second late, it's, um, your mark is capped at 40% uh, and you have a maximum of one week to submit after that. After that. And after that a week of lateness, uh, your work won't be marked uh, and it'll be regarded as a non-submission. So don't even go there, just uh, get the essay done and get it uh, submitted in plenty of time. I wouldn't leave it at the very last minute. As I say, one second late and your mark would be capped and a lot of your uh, effort might be wasted. Um, that's the essay question. You should be very aware of it. Hopefully you already got cracking on it, uh, but it's uh, about contempt of court. So the essay question explains the impact of the law of contempt on the work of a journalist in England and Wales. The question then goes on to tell you exactly what, it, what you should include. Uh, you must give a basic description of the law of contempt in England and Wales, describe the key defences that are available, and illustrate your answer with a recent example of a contempt case heard in the British courts. So there's a plan uh, sitting on Blackboard, but uh, there it is on this slide as well. If you um, uh, haven't seen it on Blackboard, but do use that plan. Uh, it takes you through exactly what you're supposed to do in the essay. Um, give a brief introduction, and then want you to state the name of the, the relevant legislation. Uh, and the big clue is that it's the Contempt of Court Act 1981. I want you to explain how this law is applied. So define what that law says, what, uh, um, what sort of material uh, uh, constitutes or a risk of contempt. I want you to set out the main defences. Remember those? Section 3, Section 4, Section 5. You might want to mention Section 10 uh, as well, but I want you to uh, just briefly explain what each of those means. And then you, I want you to use a, um, a relevant and recent case study. And when I say a, a relevant case study, I would suggest that means that it should involve uh, a publisher or a journalist, because um, that's the world we're in. Uh, and when I say recent, I would uh, say as recent as possible, but make sure the case is finished so you know what the result is. Uh, and I would say it certainly needs to be within the last 10 years to be um, uh, to count as, uh, as recent. Um, 
make sure you're aware of what defense was used during the case and explain why it was either successful or unsuccessful. And then you need to end with a conclusion that actually answers the question to, uh, to explain what the overall impact of the law of contempt is on the work of a journalist. So that's all sitting there on Blackboard telling you exactly how to write the essay, so please, please use that. Um, and remember these points as well, which I've been flagging up, um, that uh, you must be talking about the law in England and Wales, stick to the word count, 900 to 1100 words minimum and maximum, uh, and reference your work correctly um, using Harvard Six Referencing, and there's uh, help on Blackboard if you don't know how to do that, and there's a link there on the slides, which are also available on Blackboard. Um, more help, uh, again, sitting on Blackboard, uh, if you have trouble writing essays, make sure you use uh, these links to help you. Um, and also just a reminder as well about the exam, which is coming up after Easter, so you've got a bit of time for that, but uh, you might want to start using your Easter break to um, uh, start revising for the exam. It's on Tuesday, May the 18th, so it's a, yeah, it's a good way off, but uh, it's um, useful to start uh, doing a revision early so that it starts to really sink in. So Tuesday, May the 18th um, at 10 o'clock. Um, it's a 90 minute exam, just to stress that. It's 90 minutes. I did find a document which suggested a different time, uh, so I apologize for that. So it's 90 minutes to stress. It is a 90 minute exam, uh, unless, of course, you have a reasonable adjustment plan which uh, um, may um, give you extra time. Um, you'll have uh, been emailed about that if that's the case. Uh, it's an online exam, uh, which means you'll be doing it from wherever you're based, um, and you will then get the grade and feedback 15 working days later. The thing to stress about this exam is that you must pass it. Uh, you have to get 40% or more uh, in order to pass the module. It's not uh, one of those modules like most modules where you just have to get the average between the two um, assignments above 40%. You actually have to pass this particular assignment. That's a condition of the BJTC accreditation of the program. Any other thing I will just remind you of before we get into today's um, content is just to stress that thing about structuring your thoughts. Law really needs you to uh, to be logical in your approach. Don't just keep letting all the names of all these laws and all these definitions and all these um, case studies just flying around in your brain in a big tangle. Really trying to get a grip of them and make uh, some really structured notes. So be able to name the key piece of legislation which affects uh, um, each area, each topic, um, be able to define the area of law that you're talking about and then be able to uh, define the defences that are available and think about how, uh, where they would apply because that's the, what we'll be asking you to do in the exam as we do in the workshops is to define uh, def defences and be able to apply them to a specific scenario and say which defence would potentially uh, provide us with some help uh, if we were um, uh, sued or prosecuted for a particular issue. Um, so yeah, be um, uh, organised and logical. Okay, uh, I'm going to change to a different video now, uh, so I'll end this one and then we'll talk about anonymity in that next video.